Hello, buenos días, buenas tardes, hello, hello, hola, hola. Thank you for tuning in to Miss B's Audio Reads again on Facebook Live. Uh, today is March 18th, 2020. I hope that everybody is having a lovely day um, at home. Um, I am excited to get started today. Yesterday we read uh, the Lorax and we also read about the Curious Garden. And um, I got some really cool pictures from some people and so I would love to share with you. Thank you so much for sharing your art. Yesterday we had the idea of um, going outside and drawing uh, a picture of something that uh, you saw in nature or taking a picture. And so I got a few different pictures. The first one I'd love to show you is from Rita, who is 10. And she drew a picture of a spider on a web that she saw on a tree. How cool is that? I love that. I love that you went outside and found something so small and really paid attention to it. And then we have Levi, who is four. And here you can see what he's drawn and he's just precious. Look at that, you have your, your outside plants. And there's actually another one here from Levi. And it looks like we have a picture of, here, let me see if I can zoom it in. We have trees and the ocean and a dinosaur. Thank you so much for sending in these pictures. And then I got a couple other ones. Um, this is a photograph, but I thought it would be a cool thing to show of something in nature now. This isn't something you see in Western North Carolina. Look at that. Beautiful palm tree. I don't know if you can quite see the, uh, the sunset is gorgeous. And then I took a picture of moss um, because there's this really cool moss. These are two bricks outside of my house and the moss is so cool. It's like a little tiny planet inside uh, on each brick. These are two little bricks and it's like a little tiny universe um, on each of those bricks and they're both so different. So. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Levi and Rita and Marisa for sending in a photo um, to share with us. Uh, today, we are going to talk about snakes. Have you ever read this book, Verdi? I love this book. We're gonna do a little bit of fiction and a little bit of nonfiction. So fiction, this is a story. It is not a true story. However, there are some facts in it. And then we're gonna do a little bit of nonfiction as well. Um, so uh, before we get started though, I wanted to uh, show you um, a new word. Verde, sorry. Uh, verde means green in Spanish. Um, the snake that we are talking about today, he is green, verde, green. I was looking for something with snakes to wear and I didn't, but I do have this cool jungle shirt. So I thought that would help with Verdi. And then the word snake in Spanish is serpiente. Serpiente. Snake. Serpiente. S you can make that S sound. Serpiente. Snake. So we are going to read about a serpiente that is verde, a snake. That is green. This is called Verdi. And Verdi is written by Janelle Cannon. And I think I can actually hold the picture up and read to you this way for most of the pictures. So I'm going to do that. On a small tropical island, the sun rose high above the steamy jungle. A mother python was sending her hatchlings out into the forest, the way all mother pythons do. Grow up big and green, as green as the tree's leaves, she called to her little yellow babies as they happily scattered among the trees. But Verdi dawdled. He was proudly eyeing his bright yellow skin. He especially liked the bold stripes that zigzagged down his back. Why the hurry to grow up big and green, he wondered. Maybe some of the older snakes in the jungle could tell him. Verdi ventured into the treetops to look for them. Umbles, Aggie, and Ribbon were lazing on some branches nearby. 
Verity peered at their droopy green bodies. It's not polite to stare, chided Aggie. Umbles burped and groaned. It's taken nearly four weeks for that last lizard to digest. I surely do like lizards, oh, but lizards don't like me. Why don't lizards like you? asked Verity. Don't interrupt, Umbles grumbled. Dear me, whined Aggie. If I don't shed soon, this itchy skin will drive me bananas. Verity tapped the tune with his tail as he waited to speak. Stop that, Verity. It makes me nervous, Ribbon complained. Besides, you'll never grow up to be properly green, always interrupting and constantly fidgeting. Verdi couldn't imagine being in such a hurry to be like them, and he really wanted to keep his sporty stripes. Hoping to find snakes that weren't so boring, Verdi slipped away. Dozer was snoring in a tree not far from the others. Hello, said Verdi. Do you want to climb trees with me? I'm tired, Dozer growled. Go do a few laps around the jungle, okay? Verdi's heart sank. Greens were not only lazy and boring, they were rude. At the top of a very tall tree, Verdi gripped one branch with his tail and another with his little snake jaws. I will never be lazy, boring, or green, he thought. I will jump and climb and keep moving so fast that I will stay yellow and striped forever. Then Verdi let go. From a distance, the greens watched. Oh my, they chorused. Ribbon shook his head. At this rate, he'll be lucky to make it to his first molt. Aggie nodded. He's likely to put an eye out on a branch. Umbles groaned. He may not live to turn green. <laughs> Trying to get this right, there we go. But one day, Verdi's skin began to peel, revealing a pale green stripe stretching along his whole body. He, cat, he gasped. How can this be? I'm the speediest snake in the jungle and I'm still turning green. He raced down to the river, grabbing up a mouthful of rough leaves. Verdi flung himself into the water. If I can't run this green off, I'll scrub it off, he thought. His frantic splashing caught the eye of a large bottom feeder, cruising the murky depths. Yum, the old fish hummed. Lunch. Before the fish could haul Verdi under, the frightened snake bit him on the nose. Ah, poo! With a blast of his rubbery lips, the great fish sneezed, sending Verdi into the air. Slapping onto the, shop, slapping onto the soggy shore, Verdi skidded out of reach. was close, he sputtered. Every inch of his body was covered with wet, gloppy mud. Hmm, kind of lumpy, kind of brown. It sure beats being green. He left the mud on. But the soft brown muck dried into a hard gray shell and Verdi could barely move. If he even budged, the stuff cracked off in jagged chunks. As each, as each piece fell away, Verdi could see that his body was even greener than before. 
Ah, oh, this is terrible, cried Verdi. He pictured himself hanging around in droopy loops, itching and complaining and worrying all day like the old greens. He looked up into the sky where the sun blazed a beautiful yellow, just the color he used to be. Then he pulled a vine to the top of the tree. Launching himself from the treetop, Verdi startled a flock of colorful birds. He became dizzy with delight, sure the bright sun and his lofty speed would turn him golden again. In his joy, Verdi forgot he would fall back to earth. Whippity, whippity, flip, flip, wham! <laughs> Plummeting through the trees, Verdi landed in a crooked sprawl across a log on the forest. <sighs> he couldn't move. Help! He croaked. As usual, the greens had been watching Verdi's antics. They moved quickly to where he lay. Didn't we say it would come to this? Umble said, shaking his head. Aggie sighed. Lucky, things he, lucky thing he's still got two eyes. They gently lifted Verdi up to a safer place where they could watch over him while he healed. Neatly splinted to a branch, Verdi had no choice but to listen to the greens as they gambered, as they gabbed. Remember how I used to streak across the forest floor? Ribbon asked. Quick as lightning, answered Aggie, and I climbed giant trees like they were nothing. They grew taller than, they grew taller than, you know? The things I dared to run down to swallow, Umbles bragged. Wild boar were no match for me. Verdi was astonished. You used to run and climb and hunt giant pigs? What happened? Ribbon crashed just like you, Aggie replied. I took a terrible fall and almost put an eye out. Then old Umbles here nearly choked to death. Now we all prefer the quiet life. A warm perch, a little sunshine, and an occasional good meal. The greens rambled on about their days of glory and Verdi settled in on his branch. Finally, one afternoon, Umbles, Umbles said, Looks like you're ready to go again. He carefully untied Verdi from the branch. You're welcome to come visit with us, said Aggie. Ribbon agreed. The three greens slipped quietly back into the forest. Verdi wasn't ready to join them. He wasn't sure where he wanted to go. So he just stretched and stayed put until the sun went down. He listened to the forest come alive. Oh, I love these illustrations. Beautiful. Time passed. The sun and moon took turns in the sky. Verdi revealed, very marveled, as the full moon grew thinner every night. Isn't that a neat way to say that? The full moon grew thinner. Is the moon actually growing thinner? It's changing its phase. That's a great way to say it as a writer. Verdi marveled as the full moon grew thinner every night. Then he watched patiently as it slowly grew round again. He wondered why he hadn't noticed that before. Hmm. Verdi became so green that he blended perfectly with the leaves. He was so still that other creatures rocked right by without seeing him. It's amazing the things you'll notice when you're quiet and still.
Can you see him in there? Can everybody see him? Let's see. Okay, here we go. Can you see him hiding right in there? Oh, there he is. <laughs> it's hard for me to hold the book up backwards. One fine morning as Verity basked in the sunshine, two small yellow snakes approached. They tapped and fidgeted as they stared. Get a load of that old green guy, one of them whispered. Do you think he ever moves? The other snickered. I seriously doubt it. They're just like I used to be, thought Verity. And now I, and I'm now what I was afraid to be. He looked at his big green body and slowly smiled. How would you like to climb trees with me? He asked. With you? The yellows astounded. The yellows were astounded. I'll even show you my fancy figure eight, Verdi replied, though he was a little worried about putting an eye out. With practice, the three snakes performed a perfect triple figure eight. Leaping and looping with his little striped friends, Verdi laughed. I may be big and very green, but I'm still me. And that is Verdi by Janelle Cannon. To continue, I have a fun little story by, it's not a story, I'm sorry, a poem by our good pal Shel Silverstein. This one's also about snakes. It's kind of silly. Are you ready for it? It's called <clears throat> Boa Constrictor. Oh, I'm being eaten by a boa constrictor. A boa constrictor. A boa constrictor. I'm being eaten by a boa constrictor and I don't like it one bit. Well, what do you know? It's nibbling at my toe. <gasps> Oh gee, it's up to my knee. Oh my, it's up to my thigh. Oh fiddle, it's up to my middle. Oh heck, it's up to my neck. Oh dread, it's... Oh. <laughs> this is a book of lots and lots of silly poems. And I'll probably read some more here and there. It's called Where the Sidewalk Ends. I've had this book so long, look at it. It's just falling apart. <laughs> But I love old books like that. I think I have had this maybe even since I was little, but it's definitely been in all my classrooms and I've read it with all my kids. And so I love this. Um, so I wanted to bring in some nonfiction books. Do you know what nonfiction means? We just read a fiction book about a snake. Now I wanna read nonfiction books about a snake. A nonfiction book, I know a lot of you out there know, I think I almost hear you. Uh, it's a true book, a book with some facts in it and some information. So uh, this one is a cool book. This one's called uh, Animal World and it just has some questions and answers um, that I thought were kind of cool. It says, how do, you, how do snakes eat if they don't have teeth? Do you know how snakes eat if they don't have teeth? Snakes have a flexible lower jaw. They can open their mouths very wide and swallow prey that is bigger than they are. Did you know that? After a big meal, a snake moves very slowly, just like Umbles was talking about. He had a lizard and he couldn't move. So that the prey can be digested. Digestion needs so much energy that some snakes, like the Mexican rattlesnake, increase their temperature by 57 degrees Fahrenheit, so they get warmer, they get hotter. Once digestion is complete, a snake excretes the hair and claws of its prey, and they cannot digest plants. That's pretty fascinating. Now, uh, this is something I thought was interesting. How does a snake hear a snake charmer? You ever heard of a snake charmer? Somebody who can work with the snakes? It says, if you were a snake, you would not have any earache or trouble with cleaning earwax. Ew. This is because snakes don't have external ears. They cannot hear like we do. I've never thought about snake ears. Have you? However, they have an inner ear that can feel vibrations on the ground and in the air. 
When the snake sways to a snake charmer's instrument, it is actually reacting to the vibration of the snake charmer's movement, not the sound that the instrument is making. A sleeping snake might not wake up if you call it, but it would sure feel the vibration in the ground if you walked by. How cool. So they feel the vibration of things. A couple of other fun facts here. This one is all about snakes' super senses. So we already talked about the ears a little bit. It says um, hearing, they can hear but not very well. Their ear parts are inside their heads and the sound makes the vibration. So they can, again, they can kind of feel those footsteps but they don't really hear them. As far as smelling goes, a snake's long tongue, it flicks up and down. You can see in this picture. Ooh, if you're afraid of snakes, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, it picks up scents from the air and the ground. Then it slips it back into its mouth. And the two openings on the roof of the mouth lead to a very sensitive spot called the Jacobson's organ. Interesting. It touches its tongue to this organ, rubbing off the scents it has collected. The organ communicates with the brain to tell the snake if it's a meal, a buddy, or an enemy. It works something like your nose, but it's inside the snake's mouth. I had no idea. So they use their tongue and they get the smells from the ground and from the air, and then they bring the tongue back into the mouth and it touches an organ and it tells them what it is. Huh. Very cool. Do you know why a snake's tongue is forked? Have you ever seen it? That means it you know, it kind of, you can't really see it in this picture. Let me see if I have a good picture here. So it kind of, it's like a fork in the rope. It splits off. It says so it can smell in stereo. This is cool. I like all our music references today. Each point on the tip of the tongue fits into one of the openings in the Jacobson's organ. If the odor is stronger on one side, the snake can tell which direction the, or the odor is coming from. Very cool. So seeing, some snakes have better vision than others. It depends on how they live. Snakes that burrow in the ground, for example, they can hardly see at all, but that's okay because they get all the information they need from their other senses. So when they can't see, they use their other senses. You see the round pupil of the snake below? That shape is common for snakes that are active in the daytime, so their pupils get really big. They usually see shapes and movement pretty well. This helps them to move quickly and chase down prey. Snakes that are night hunters often have pupils that are long slits like cats. Cool. The darker it gets, the wider they open up. That lets in as much dim light as possible and allows the snake to see better in the dark. And lastly here, uh, sensing heat. Certain snakes can also see their prey in total darkness. Hmm. They use a special heat sensor called pits to zero in on the warmth of their prey's body. Nerves inside the pits pick up the body heat from the warm prey, and then they send the messages to the snake's brain of a picture where a picture of the prey is formed. Very cool. So there are different ways that snakes move, and this is something we can do before we sign off. Snakes. They wriggle, can you wriggle, can you wriggle, can you wriggle? This is the most common way to go. The snake forms an S shape with its body. <laughs> As each curve pushes against the ground, first on one side of the snake, then on the other, the snake moves forward. When a snake swims, the curves in its body push against the water in the same way. So that's something you can try on the floor, around your house. <laughs> <laughs> Try to slither around, wriggle around like a snake. Creeping. To go slow in caterpillar fashion, a snake straightens out and lets its belly scales do the walking. The edges of the scales grab the ground while they hold on. The snake pulls its body forward. So that's something you can try by going straight and then slowly trying to pull your body forward. And then go straight. Then you can try to pull your body forward probably really good for your core muscles and your belly. And then there's side winding. To move across loose desert sand, a side winder crawls with parts of its body lifted off the ground. 
The head lifts up and the body follows in a kind of looping action. I'm not sure how you would do that, but you could probably get pretty creative. All right. So that's that about snakes. We got to read a cool story. We got to learn some pretty cool facts um, to remind you how you say snake in Spanish, serpiente, serpiente. The serpiente slithers, serpiente. And before we take off, there was a couple, couple other Spanish phrases I thought I would show you. And, Cause these are ones that I usually say when I'm saying good morning or good afternoon. You know, we learned hola, me llamo, right? Hola, me llamo, Miss B. So if it's morning time where you are, maybe you're in California and uh, it's morning over there, you would say, buenos dias, good morning. Buenos dias. That's something you can say to your mom and your dad when you wake up. Buenos dias, hola, buenos dias. In the afternoon, you would say, Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. So here where I live right now, it is the afternoon. So when I sign on, I would say, Hola amigos, buenas tardes. Es Miss B. Hello friends, good afternoon. It's Miss B. So I will be back tomorrow. You can tune into Miss B's audio reads tomorrow. Still deciding what we're gonna do. I have some more cool books in the works. Um, just trying to space everything out a little bit. So I don't have any homework for you today unless you want to, actually I, I would, if you would like to do something, you can choose an animal of your choice and draw a picture of it and write a fun fact if you are of the, if you're able to write something. So maybe you really love lizards and you are really good at drawing and you want to draw yourself a salamander. You draw a picture of the salamander and then write one cool fact. And if you put it under the comments below or you have your mom and dad take a picture of it, they can put it under the comments below and I will share them tomorrow first thing. Um, thanks again to those that sent in pictures from yesterday's homework. Um, I love getting those and, uh, and being able to share them with you all. So if you would like Today, you can draw a picture of an animal, some kind of animal, and if you are able to draw, uh, to write about it, you can write a fun fact about that animal, and I will share it with all of our amigos here on Miss B's Audio Reads. Hasta luego, see you later.